Hi, fellow freaks and nerdly nerdicles. This is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, or Jeremy Penner is known to my victims for about 30 seconds. This video is going to be a doozy with deja vu all up in this bitch from the moment we start, because today I'm reviewing Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls for the PS4. And just a while ago, you may remember I reviewed Diablo 3 for the Xbox 360. So other than the name change and the jump in system generations, what's changed here? Hold on to your butts, throw the cat outside, but open the screen door first, put the kids to bed, or cover their ears. Three, two, one, here we go. Graphics are up first. Well, the jump to the next-gen system from the 360 and PS3 is noticeable. If noticeable is the difference between lighting your face on fire and having Monica Bellucci cup your nuts lightly and whisper anime subtitles into your ear, it's fairly massive and a big jump from the already overall excellent look from the past-gen systems. Here there's more debris, more effects, more basically everything, even pixels for those who are notoriously cranky about that stuff. More importantly, the actual textures seem to have had an increase, not only in resolution, but in overall content. And without a frame counter, it looked like a solid 60 frames per second. I loved it. When you already have an excellent game on a past-gen system, you'd hope that the next-gen version would look this good or better, but in past-gens we've seen that this hasn't always been the case. Luckily here, Blizzard went out of their way to justify a purchase both graphically and in content, which I'll get to in a moment. This is something many other games games really don't do and so I was happy to see it. Sound, music, and voice. Listen, there's not much to add to my last review. The game sounds excellent, and the effects in the new areas are handled just as well as the base game. You really can't complain about any of the sound effects in the game. Music. It's there, and it's good. The same music you always expect, plus what sounds like a couple new tunes, but I could be mistaken on that part, and I'll get to why in just a moment. Voice. Awesome. I frankly think these guys and maybe one to two other companies work this hard on voices, and Blizzard has the average score of an MIT student after four days of Ritalin and eating nothing but coffee grounds. They're just absolutely perfect at this. Gameplay's up next. Pure fucking exploding anarchy. This is like being in a riot mosh pit and LSD all at the same time, though technically if you're in those first two, LSD probably isn't a bad idea. Blizzard changed up a bunch of shit, and I ain't gonna say it feels like a different game, but there's so much change that I am glad I had to replay a good portion of it to see the new stuff. Firstly, let's just cover Diablo 3 as it normally stands for a moment. A three-fourths view action RPG with a heady influx of weapons exploding from enemies like a god with a sense of humor grabbed every creature and stuffed them full to the brim with shit you asked for on last Christmas's wish list. The balance in loot seemed perfect, exploding a rainbow of colored items every time something, anything, dies in the game. Shit, even the tree trunks flick out rewards like a petal in a lab rat's cage. I got a couple legendaries in my gameplay, and I feel that for a console game, it is right in the money when it comes to the time versus reward and calculation in itself. In fact, as with the original game, I found myself tickling the start button every time I thought I needed a break. Second guessing my decision to spend any time not playing the game is something like an, an affront to fun and childhood. However, Reaper adds a boatload of shit, and like a Cuban raft filled with refugees, at times it can be a bit troublesome to steer. The game raises the level cap, adds new skills, a new playable character, and another slot for passive skills once you max out at the new 70th level. And all that's great stuff and will attract the hardcore players and new players alike, as well as some of the overall changes to the game will attract both groups. Reaper also adds Adventure Mode, which is like a forever play mode with you exploring the world with new things to do, new NPCs, and new actions you can take, bounties, and randomized locations. Sadly, Reaper didn't include a, hey shit man, I didn't play Diablo 3 on my PS3, so I can't start a new game in adventure mode. Mode. So if you're like me, I couldn't figure out a way to start in adventure mode, so you have to beat the game to unlock it. So I ended up trucking over to a pals and playing it on their system to see the new stuff, which took a bite out of my enjoyment a bit. A handjob's still sex, but it's a little rough. That's how you'll feel if you jumped ecosystems on this title. With the new PCs in adventure mode, you can also gamble and enchant enchantment items and also transmorgify, which sounds like something out of the world police and their super secret balmorification, but it's really just changing what the fuck you look like. Included in adventure mode are massive rifts, which are like randomized regions, making the world even bigger than it did already. However, to get to achieve the rifts, you also have to go out and find items known as keystones. So there's a lot of give and take for finding and seeing some of the new content. They also have bounties in adventure mode. Imagine a random quest board and you have the right idea with a random quest given to you many times with you running out to kill an enemy or just laying waste to an entire region and various other things. The bounties are basically where you get items to unlock the rifts and you get gold and you get uh, better weapons. I get where Blizzard was going with this and it's great to see it. It really does extend the replay value but if you played on a different system last gen you might be stuck wading through the original content to see the new stuff. But that doesn't include all the new stuff. As usual, Blizzard decided to add a new character, the Crusader. 
if you remember my review for Diablo 3, you remember me saying that these characters are like the X-Men of the Diablo universe, just fucking shit up the entire time. Where the Crusader's like Superman with no flight. It doesn't mean he can't die, but he's a fucking powerhouse. A character that should just have his avatar be a fist with a middle finger up. The Crusader is a sword and board freak that honestly is the equivalent of putting a steering wheel on a fucking meteorite and trying to go shopping. I seriously can't believe enemies even approach him. But that doesn't mean he isn't fun to play. He, or she, is a total blast to play, actually, and even has a couple skills that change their attacks to almost like a somewhat ranged character. It's an, it's an odd character, really, when you take it all into account. Uh, it's got some great skills, and it has a skill for almost every occasion. It's very fun to play. In the end, the locking off of the adventure mode, if you don't have a character, you can transfer. Uh, but that does sting a bit if you can't, only because you want to see that extra adventure, which is not too shabby by itself anyway, and both in meat and overall content. So it really does get held back a bit by that. And there's two types of buyers for this game, really. Those who already know the Leaping Lenny Poffo, Doink the Clown, Prodigy gameplay, and love it, smiting enemies left and right, collecting loot, and being little digital versions of Chuck Norris on a slow day. There's the other group who finally have decided to get the game after missing out or holding out on three. Luckily, the review score is the same, and in the end, the adventure mode being held back really isn't going to affect either of those two groups. I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. It'll come to you as no surprise that despite already owning three, the additional skills, characters, and surprises in the adventure mode make this game worthy of a purchase even if you have the original. It sounds crazy, I know, but the boatload of content, additional graphics, sheen, and adventure mode makes suggesting this to anyone to buy a moot point. So I hope you're out there crusading your way through the world, smashing everyone's shit, and leaving the poor people of Tristan destitute and without gold or bookshelves. This is Garrick signing out from the West March Heights, somersaulting through headstones. Peace out, bitches.